And joining us now is Democratic Senator Amy Klobuchar of Minnesota. Senator, just about this case, uh, it may be that the court Thanks, will uh, rule that they don't have standing, a narrow ruling, but this is still going to be an issue because the groups could very likely look for someone, you know, not these doctors who already had a way of opting out, but some patient uh, who might you know, pass the test of standing. And so the issue of mephipistone uh, uh, could likely come back again before the court, abortion and IVF and all these other procedures. Exactly, Andrea. Uh, you look at the fact uh, that when you listen to that argument, which I did this morning, yes, the judges seemed deeply skeptical uh, about the standing argument, including conservative justices, uh, in their questioning, like Gorsuch talking about how it was a law, a small lawsuit with national implications, or Elena Kagan, my favorite line, who is your person, who is your person, who would have standing, and Katanji Brown-Jackson, how she brought it home by talking about the balance that you're talking about the small group of doctors um, who, by the way, have their own protections already written into law versus the over 60 percent of women who choose to use this abortion medication when seeking an abortion. So your question. This all came out of Dobbs, right? We wouldn't be having these arguments right now. This all came out of Dobbs. We used to have protections for the women of this country, and that was called Roe v. Wade. And that Dobbs decision turned it on its head, and now we're seeing a patchwork. If the judges went the other way on this, it wouldn't just be states where abortion has been banned. It would be every state in the country banning a safe and effective drug. So this is just the beginning, whether it's the Alabama IVF ruling, whether it's these cases out of Texas, uh, whether it's the um, assault on emergency care. Uh, we're going to continue to see, because of the Dobbs decision and the failure, of, sadly, of many Republicans to side with us on codifying Roe v. Wade into law, we are not not able to do that right now. And that's why uh, this is so important, not just this decision, but this election that's coming up, because we would have the ability to codify uh, Roe v. Wade into law if we elect uh, people who stand on the side of women making their own health care decisions. And you found, an, uh, with other Democrats in uh, Congress, filed an amicus brief in this. You're a former prosecutor. You've you know, been a lawyer for a, for a long, long time. And so, you know, that the Supreme Court's Dobbs decision said that this was going to be up to the individual states, leaving it to the states to make decisions, yeah. supposedly. But what you just outlined would be, if this pill were outlawed, this medication and other medications that are regulated by the FDA nationally uh, would, <laughs> could be banned. Yeah, that's the irony of this. When you look at Justice Alito's quotes from that time period, where he said, we should let the states uh, decide, um, look at what's happened. This is all coming back to this same court that overturned 50 years of precedent with Roe v. Wade. And now, before them, is a drug that's been found safe and legal for nearly 25 years and is safe and legal all over this country. So you're exactly right, Andrea. This is full circle back to the court again. And it's why we must step in, codify Roe v. Wade into law, and protect women all across the country with this simple principle that they should be able to make their own health care decisions and not politicians. Now, I also want to ask you about the bridge collapse, this horrific bridge collapse overnight in Baltimore. You've dealt with major infrastructure accidents with a bridge, in fact, in Minnesota. Uh, is what we don't, what we know is that officials, the governor in Westmore says there's no terrorism involved. We have to find out why they reportedly, early reports could be wrong, but reportedly lost power. But the visual of this ship, you know, nearly a thousand feet long, loaded with cars to go to Sri Lanka, going into a major pylon on this bridge and collapsing, you know, this incredible video from the camera that's always trained on that highway, 695, it's just remarkable. You know what the impact is going to be on the yeah. traffic. 35,000 cars a day on that yeah, bridge. Exactly. 
Uh, it was unbelievably tragic. Of course, it brought me back to the 35W Bridge, which actually had 140,000 cars a day, eight blocks from my house. And as I said that day, a bridge just shouldn't fall down in the middle of America. So this is what I know will happen. First, you saw the governor showing leadership out there. Then you're going to see the representatives from Maryland uh, making sure that there's the funding in place, both the federal, state level, uh, to rebuild that bridge as soon as possible. We did the 30. 35W bridge in 13 months, uh, which at that time uh, was a record for an eight-lane highway. Um, then, of course, you're going to have an investigation into um, what happened with this ship and how this horrific thing happened. But today, as the governor noted, our focus is on whatever kind of search and rescue must continue, but also on those first responders who had the wherewithal to, once they heard the May Day, to save lives by making sure more vehicles did not go over the bridge. So we've got to have great respect for what they did. Um, work to do whatever we can to rescue those workers who are still missing, who are just doing their jobs on the bridge. And then from there will come the rebuilding, the, of course, diverting of traffic. I remember the next day when the 35W bridge collapsed, literally we had electronic billboards out telling people which buses they should take, how they could get around this, because it was such a major artery in our state. So my heart and prayers with the people of Maryland, uh, but I did appreciate uh, the governor's leadership in getting out there immediately. Senator Amy Klobuchar, thank you, as always. Great to see you, ma'am. Hey, everyone. MSNBC has a new and improved app. You'll get real-time alerts and analysis, live blogs, in-depth essays, video highlights, and the best 2024 election coverage. Download the new MSNBC app. Here's how to do it. You tap on the App Store on your phone. You hit search on the bottom right corner. You type in MSNBC. You click on the MSNBC app. You click on get or the cloud icon and enjoy it.